Greetings ladies and gentlemen, my name is Anna520 and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. In the last episode, we finished off the s no. We finished off the Shadow Temple, defeating Bongo Bongo, the evil shadow spirit that had been sealed beneath the well and escaped. And then we came here to Gerudo Valley and Gerudo Fortress to try and uh, find the next temple. What we found is Ooh, okay, nope, 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 not that way. Uh, what we found is, um, the Gerudo hideout is being guarded by Gerudo women. And if they catch us, they will lock us up. So what we have to do is sneak around and try and help the carpenters escape from the hideout. All right, what are we looking at here? Okay, I've been here. I'm trying to figure out where we're going. We're going in this door. Okay, so we're gonna be up here. You need to watch this area because it looks like you can make a jump to that platform. You cannot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot you. And I'm gonna shoot you. I'm going to look around to see if there's anybody else in here. Just to prove it, you cannot jump to that platform. You can make a fairy spawn there if you need to. But we're going to come up here instead. And find ourselves up here on this platform. So, there's two things we need to do. One of them is make it night. Because there's a Skulltula on the wall back here. Grab that. And now we need to climb up here. Jump across here. And climb up these vines. Shut up, Navi. What do you even have to say at this point? The desert. That is where Ganondorf the Evil King was born. If we go there, we might find something. Aha. Uh -huh. So. We can shoot to this chest. And just barely not make it. There we go. Or you can make Pierre appear. And you can get to him through the hookshot, I think. But anyway, we've got this chest here, containing a piece of heart. We've got three of them now. This is where Pierre would appear. We need to jump down here, and jump down here for the last carpenter. Don't move from this spot, because, uh-oh, there's that guard. I think that's the only guard, though. Yep. And you can come in here and... Hey, you, young man, over there! Look here, over here, inside the cell! Okay. This is the last one. If I pull this off, this will be the first time actually making it through the Gerudo's hideout without being imprisoned. Okay. Lock on. There we go. You did the attack, too. Yeah, spam that. Spam that attack. Do it. There we go. That was easy. This is the first time I've gotten through this area without being caught at least once. I was afraid you were going to forget about me. Now I'm free. Thanks. I'm Shiro the Carpenter. 
for rescuing me, I'll tell you something interesting about the desert that I overheard the Gerudos talking about. They said, in order to cross the haunted wasteland, you'll need the Eye of Truth. The Colossus is on the far side of the wasteland. Okay, now I'm going back to my tent near Gerudo Valley, so drop by sometime. You may find something helpful there. Bye! Alright, off you go. I've seen your fine work. To get past the guards here, you must have good thieving skills. I used to think that all men besides the great Gandorf were useless. But now that I've seen you, I don't think so anymore. The exalted Naburu, our leader, put me in charge of this fortress. Naburu is the second in command of the great Ganondorf, king of the Gerudo thieves. Her headquarters are in the Spirit Temple, which is at the end of the desert. Say, you must want to become one of us, eh? Alright then, you're in from now on. Take this. With it, you will have free access to all areas of the fortress. And she gives us the Gerudo's membership card. You can get into the Gerudo's training ground in their hideout. We also no longer have to worry about the guards. Also, fun fact about uh, this this lovely lady right here. Um, I think if we change our outfit... Yep, her outfit also changes. For some reason, her colors are tied to ours. However, one other funny thing. I'm not sure if this is going to work, but if you pull out a bomb chew... Boop! Well, that's a thing. <laughs> that's cute. Um, sorry. You'll be okay. Anyway, we now have free access to the Gerudo's Fortress, which means we no longer have to worry about the guards. So we can walk freely around. We can do this, the Gerudo's Training Grounds, but there's not really a whole lot we can do in there right now. Or rather, we can't complete it because we don't have the item, or one of the items, from the Spirit Temple. And you need that to complete the Gerudo Training Ground. Anyway, I'm coming up here to the, um... this place. Because there's a Golden Skulltula up here. It's stuck to the front of this target. So, if we... These are handy dandy long shot to uh, grab that. Also, you can just do this. It doesn't do any. It, there's no point to it, but you can do that. Anyway, is that everything? That is all the gold skeletons of Gerudo's fortress. Now, it's time to make it day. Because, unfortunately, it is time for the Gerudo Archery Challenge. Remember Bomb Chew Bowling? Yeah, this is going to be like Bomb Chew Bowling. So for the Gerudo Archery Challenge, we're going to need to ride a Pona. And this is one of the reasons why... I, uh, wanted the biggest wallet. This is probably going to drain my wallet pretty substantially. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here, stop, and save. Hey, newcomer! You have a fine horse. I don't know where you stole it from, but... Okay, how about challenging this horseback archery? Once the horse starts galloping, shoot the targets with your arrows. Let's see how many points you can score. You get 20 arrows. If you can score a thousand points, I will give you something good. Do you want to try for 20 rupees? Yes, we do. Also, we, we technically did steal this horse from Ingo. 
All right, here we go. So starting off, you want to try and shoot these pots. Each one of them is worth 100 points. And then you want to try and shoot the targets here. Depending on where you hit the target, will determine how many points you get. 100 for a bullseye, 64 close, 34 really off. You don't get any points if you miss, stupid. You can also um, run out of arrows to make the thing end faster. Also, did the horse freezes there. Fantastic! You are a true master! I will give this to you. Keep improving yourself. She'll give us a piece of heart for getting a thousand points. So if we get back up on our horse here. Hey, rookie. You're looking good. Show me your skill again. You should set a new goal of 1,500 points and try again. Do you want to try for 20 rupees? Yes. Yes, we do. Now we need to get 1,500 points. We're going to need to hit at least... Fifth, uh, we're going to need to get at least... Uh, 8 bullseyes. So not only do we have the arrow limit, we also have to worry about, um, what the heck was that shot? Okay, I need two more bullseyes. Come on now. Oh! <laughs> I'll be darned. You're the ultimate master. I will give you an item suitable for the master. This quiver is very important to me. I want you to have it. Take good care of it, okay? And for getting a score of at least 1,500, you get the biggest quiver. We can now hold 50 arrows. And I can't believe I did that first try. I'm so glad I got that on camera. Okay. <laughs> oh, you know what? Save. <laughs> now I just need to hope the power doesn't go out. Anyway, so, now that we've gotten the biggest quiver and a piece of heart, how many, how many pieces of heart do we have? None. We just got a new heart container, so, whoops. Yeah, okay. We now have 18 heart containers. Also, up there is where you end up if you get captured. There's a box up on top of that area that contains a purple rupee if you need rupees. Um, excuse me. So, in order to get into the desert, what we need to do is we need to climb up here. I have 49 bomb chew! Why? Hey, rookie. Are you going into the desert? I'll open this gate for you, but... You can't cross the desert unless you pass the two trials. The first trial is the River of Sand. You can't walk across this river. After you cross it, follow the flags we place there. The second trial is the Phantom Guide. Those without eyes that can see the truth will only find themselves returning here. You're going anyway, aren't you? I won't stop you. Go ahead. And with her claps, she opens the gate. And we now have access to the desert wasteland. So, the first trial... Uh, the haunted wasteland. The first trial is the River of Sand, here. It's too steep to climb either side, but you can long shot across to these boxes. Afterwards, we need to follow the flags that have been placed here. At Hello. All those reckless enough to venture to the desert, please drop by our shop. Carpet Merchant. 
Alright. Also, you sink in the sand if you stand still for too long. There's the carpet merchant above some quicksand. So, we need to put on our boots. Boots! Hello. Welcome. I am selling stuff, strange and rare, from all over the world to everybody. Today's special is... A dangerous running object. Terrifying. I won't tell you what it is until I see the money. How about 200 rupees? Okay. He's selling bomb chew for 200 rupees. Thank you very much. What I'm selling is bomb chew. The mark that will lead you to the spirit temple is the flag on the left outside the shop. Be seeing you. Yep. I did that on purpose, because I'm going to drain out my wallet. You'll see why. Anyway. So we need to follow the flags. If you venture too far away from the flags, you will end up being voided out and returned to the beginning. Also, my tablet is telling me I have low battery. I've been told that an easy way to get through here is to play the Song of Time. Or not the Song of Time, Song of Storms. And that will allow you to see the flags better in the lightning. Anyway, here's this little place. You drop down here, and there's a gold Skulltula. You're going to want this guy, if you want to get 100%. But then we also have two braziers. We can light them with our fire arrows. Lighting them causes this chest to fall. And inside this chest is... 50 rupees. So let's get out of here. Not sure what this black void is about. Probably it's a loading zone for the, the sand. Anyway, we need to climb to the top here, get out of our lens of truth. And check this black card. One with the Eye of Truth shall be guided to the Spirit Temple by an inviting ghost. There's that ghost. I'll be your guide on the way, but coming back, I won't play. I'll show you the only way to go, so follow me and don't be slow. So we need to follow him through the void of sand. Straying too far from this path will again end you up or end up voiding you out. Oops! You Once we get too far into the desert, we're gonna start seeing levers. There's a box here. Excuse me. All the ghosts. You need to be careful here. The ghost is gonna lead you back and to the box again. But you can actually just make a run for the flag gate that you may have seen there. Stop. Go away. And then through here, we are now out of the woods. You can see us sinking in the sand there. Welcome to the Desert Colossus. Also, more levers. Coming over here, you'll see a crack in the wall. I should also point out these levers. These levers behave very much like the stall children. In that, if you kill enough of them, eventually, giant ones start spawning. So this is a great fairy's fountain. Let's see what the great fairy has for us.
Welcome, Link. I am the Great Fairy of Magic. I will give you a magic spell. Please take it. <laughs> this one is blue. This is Nehru's Love. Cast this to create a powerful protective barrier. It's defensive magic you can use with C. <laughs> Nehru's Love is in effect for only a limited time, so use it carefully. When battle has made you weary, please come back to see me. Alright. So we now have all three of our spells. Din's Fire... Feroar's Wind, and Nehru's Love. Nehru's Love takes twice as much magic as Din's Fire or Feroar's Wind. But it makes you completely invulnerable while it is active. Bear that in mind. Anyway. Ow. We've got a thing over here. Our warp thing. Wait a minute, is that sand flowing? That sand is flowing. Hmm. Never noticed that before. Anyway, one other thing you can do here is that if you need... Oh, also time flows normally in this, on this area. If you need fairies, you can come over here to this small oasis. Stand on this rock and play the Song of Storms. The oasis will fill with water. And a bunch of fairies will pop out of it. Also, on the note of this, um, excuse me, on the note of this oasis, there is a golden skulltula on the back of this tree. That's not what I was intending to do, but that works. Anyway, let's go check out the Desert Colossus. Go away. Duck. We have two large snake statues here. On our right, we have a massive black block that we cannot push. On the other side, we have a hole, which we are too big to enter. So what do we do? If you want to proceed to the past, you should return here with the pure heart of a child. If you want to travel to the future, you should return here with the power of silver from the past. Hmm. It's chic. Past, present, future. The Master Sword is a ship with which you can sail upstream and downstream through Time's River. The port for that ship is in the Temple of Time. To restore the Desert Colossus and enter the Spirit Temple, you must travel back through Time's Flow. Listen to this Requiem of Spirit. This melody will lead a child back to the desert. Gabora, it's been a long time since we've seen you, sir.
You have learned the Requiem of Spirit. My man summoned a s sandstorm. Anyway. Canonically, that is the last time Kapor Gabora shows up. But there's nothing more for us to do with the Desert Colossus right now as an adult, so we must return to the Temple of Time and become a child once more. I think now is the time we're going to go do that crazy thing that I was draining my wallet for. Come back here, and... Return to the past now. Child once more. Now, instead of heading just straight for the Spirit Temple, there is something we're going to need to do in Hyrule Field. In Hyrule Field, after you've defeated, I believe, the Fire and the Water Temple, or maybe it's just the Water Temple, there is a flag that is set in the game's code to spawn a certain NPC. That NPC is the buyer for the bunny hood. He will not show up until at least you've beaten the Water Temple, I think. It's either the Water Temple or the Shadow Temple. But I'm also going to put the bunny hood on so we don't have to worry about stall children. He actually spawns over there. You may get to see him start running. There he is. This is the Running Man. He is known as the Running Man because he runs. <laughs> and that's all he seems to do, is run. But we now have to chase him down so we can sell him this hat and uh, he'll sit down periodically for that purpose I bet with those long ears you can hear the voices oh those are genuine rabbit ears from the animal of legend I don't care how expensive it is please sell it to me all right sure my longtime dream returning to the wildlife finally the actor stage and prop have been united it's a 50 rupee mask but he paid you a crazy amount of money for it more money than you can count. Go back to the mask shop and pay back just 50 rupees of this money. So he now has the bunny hood on. He fills your wallet. It doesn't matter how empty it is or how big it is. He fills your wallet whenever he buys the bunny hood. Now you might be wondering why I'm stood here just waiting. Well, there's a reason. As soon as this man stands up, he's going to do something crazy. Whenever he stands up. Hey, buddy, stand up. I think he sits for a little while and rests. He only does... I think he stops doing that now that he has the bunny hood on. But, oh, there he goes. Whoa, there he goes. Now, if you get if you get in front of him, he's going to bowl you over. That's kind of what I was trying to have happen, but it, it didn't work out that way, unfortunately. Because he went off in a different direction than I expected. Anyway. He's, he's going to be running in the field for the rest of the game, I think. Anyway, we need to go back to the Happy Mask Shop. And pay back 50 rupees of this money. And that should be the end of the child trading sequence. Also, we're almost out of time. 
There's something else we need to do after we're done with the child trading sequence. And that's going to be the first thing we do in the next episode, because we're almost out of time. Or we technically are out of time. But I want to go pay back the money and get the next piece of equipment that's going to remain in our inventory for the rest of the game. Hello, sir. Oh, great. You sold it. Please pay back... Please pay me back 50 rupees for the bunny hood now. Oh, yeah. Very well done. All the masks are sold out. I knew I could trust you. As a reward, I will lend you this special mask. This is the Mask of Truth. It is a mysterious mask passed down by the Sheikah. With this mask, you can see into other people's minds. It's useful, but scary. Why is it scary? You may find out as you grow older and discover the true meaning of life. Ho ho ho! And he gives us the Mask of Truth. He, um, uh, also. From now on, you can borrow any mask you want. Just have faith. He also lets us have access to these three other masks. There is the Zora mask, the Goron mask, and the Gerudo mask. These masks don't do anything except give people different types of responses. But this however, is going to be the mask that we keep for the rest of the game. And in the next episode, I will explain it. But for now, this is Xenify20, signing out.